We are back. This is families. Speaking of families, my family is back. You know. Yeah. Ela and Theodore hey. arrived at 5 a.m. this morning, which means dad didn't <laughs> sleep. So tired. So forgive me if I'm sleepy. You look sleepy. Yeah, my eyes are heavy. But we have a great episode here today. Um, sponsored by Honey, Babel, and HelloFresh. Okay. Oh, and an uh, important show announcement is that to this week we're going back to the schedule. We have families off the rails and after dark. We're going. It's all back. Yeah. All the time, baby. So everybody stop worrying. <laughs> we're back. Okay? Just when Ela's gone, things go off the rails. You know how it is. We're back. One other thing real fast um, is that this Thursday we have a Teddy Fresh collection coming out. Teddy Fresh on Instagram. You can preview it. Here's one today. Um, we got these jeans. Look at this. Oh, wow. These jeans and this top. Whoops. Is that high-waisted? Um, I don't know. It looks normal to me. Um, you know, there's a bunch of cool stuff coming out. Uh, follow Teddy Fresh on Instagram. To find out when it's coming out, but it's coming out on Thursday, 10 a.m. Here we go. We got cool designs, beautiful graphics. This is a floral embroidery that says Teddy Fresh. Oh my uh -huh. goodness. Wow. Classic. Classic. You know what it is. Get on over there, teddyfresh.com and Teddy Fresh on Instagram. Thank you. Welcome back, Hila. Also, shout out to my mom who is rocking the Care Bears. Where there's still some left on the website. I got also, ready. My mom keeps pointing out, and I, I often forget that you have a pacemaker, or I don't want to, I don't like, but yeah, there's yeah. a pacemaker here. You want to show it off? My pacemaker? Yeah. TikTok. The people are curious. I can't, is it usual where you can, oh my God, it's so wild. There's like a big device. It is. It's a device that keeps my heart moving. What's it like having a big device in your body? It's uncomfortable. Do you get used to it? No. Really? No. Whenever I sleep, it just digs into my shoulder. Oh. I think that might have something to do with this thing. Oh, my mom's I don't got know. a bump here, too. Did you get any news on the bump? <laughs> I talked to the doctor this morning. What did he say? I have to see an orthopedic doctor next. They're, but they're not super worried about it? N no, I, I will, you know, they have no idea what it is. My mom's got a bump. She's got a pacemaker. <laughs> a but, you know, when my my mom had, like, did they ever figure out what happened to you? I mean, did mom have a heart attack? Like, what happened? No, my heart just stopped. I didn't have a heart attack. Oh, isn't that what a heart attack is? Mm, is that heart failure? It, it, my, my, uh, I, nothing was clogged. It's, it's, I have sick sinus syndrome, and it's an mm. electrical charge thing mm. where your, your heart isn't in sync. Mm. And so, um, it doesn't beat correctly. And my heart was going, you know, I don't feel like beating. I'm just mm. going to hang out a little bit. So it just would stop. So <clears throat> so this keeps it beating. It gives so it a you, kick. Do you feel this when it shocks your heart? Do you ever feel it shocking away or um, is it just doing its thing? If I'm real still, yeah, I can feel it sometimes. Really? I have something else a cardial issue where my heart skips a beat and it starts oh, going really, really fast. That but happens? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. mom. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna outlive everybody. <laughs> I think so, actually. I got a, and dad's bionic. Dad's got a new shoulder and I got How's a it feel to be old, guys? <laughs> We're falling apart. <laughs> Dad doesn't know. <gasps> wow. Yeah, I forget you have that pace. My mom nearly died. I thought, I honestly thought you were gonna die. Yeah, I, I kind of thought I. I was scary. It was it, for a while. There was a, a few years ago. ago. <clears throat> My mom was in the hospital, uh, gr gravely ill. You know, it's mess. The surgeon actually did more damage than the whatever the heart thing you had in the end. Well, I mean, if I hadn't had the pacemaker put in, I I would my heart would have just stopped and I would have, mm. you know, died. So he put it in, but. You know, because I'm so thin, they managed to puncture my lung. Oh, God, I forgot about. So so they take a, like a buzz saw. They rush my mom into the <laughs> hospital. Saw. Well, I don't know how they do it. They rush my mom into the hospital. 
<clears throat> and yes, to save, they did save your life, but they did. <clears throat> I think they almost killed you because that's when I was really worried about you. Yeah, so they they the grind her company. chest open, tear it open to get to your heart. Well, no, they don't tear it open. They just <laughs> you have like a, a cartilage, and they the doctor explained to me that he was going to take it out. And then they kind of lift up your rib cage. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of, uh, there's two wires that go to my heart, the top and the bottom part of my heart. Anyways, they have to put like a straw device. They they put it between your ribs mm. and <clears throat> they thread it and it has to go into your heart. And he, he scratched the lung, I guess, when he, he was doing that, he punctured <laughs> my lung. And because I have autoimmune disorders, my lung wouldn't refill. Well, I don't think puncturing the lung is generally something that you easily heal from anyway. No, actually, when your lung gets <laughs> punctured, <laughs> um, sometimes it'll just repair itself and reinflate and it's not a hmm. big deal. But hmm. because of my autoimmune disorders, my lung wouldn't refill, and then my other lung was starting to collapse. And uh, and when I was in the hospital, they kept on taking x-rays of me, which I didn't understand. And then uh, this doctor comes rushing in. He goes, okay, I'm here for the emergency. And I had already had my, my heart oh, no. surgery. You didn't know what was happening. I go, what emergency? But you were hard at breathing. You were having difficulty breathing at the time. Yeah. Yeah. You just figured, well, I just had a major surgery. Right, right. And he goes, well, one lung is completely collapsed and the other lung is going, is losing its its shape. And unless you want to be on a respirator, we need to take you into surgery now. Oh my God. And the nurse says, well, doctor, when do you want to prep her? And, and he said, yesterday. And Jesus. So they whisked me away to the table and they they stuck a hose in me. And then all this, you know, because when your lung is punctured, you get fluid and blood. Anyways, all that had to be emptied out. Mm -hmm. And then they try to ref refill you your the thing lung. where they put a tube in your mouth and sucked fluid or. No, no, no. It was just into my lungs. Oh, they did it out of your back, right? Like right, that. right, right, right. They, they stuck me in with a needle and then they had to take a small tube into a bigger. T oh, it was a bigger tube into a smaller tube. I don't remember. But the they whole thing was fluid really out of your lungs through your back, right? Right. Pfft, right. Crazy. Right. Right. But that was, oh God, the story's so long. It was just yeah. crazy. But I'm glad. I mean, <laughs> it was crazy because, I mean, a tangent from the, from the pacemaker. But yeah, I just can't believe that you're like back in good health because man, yeah. things things were looking, things were looking really bad, and you just made such a amazing recovery. Yeah, it took about a year. But I came back. I came back and now I swim. Back and better than ever. Instead of run, I swim. So. so there you have it. My mom's pacemaker story. But better still. By the way, the moral of the story is, <laughs> oh, the Teddy Fresh? Yeah. The fuck the Teddy Fresh? Well, thank you so much. <sighs> the moral of the story, in case anyone's wondering, is go to the doctor. Because you refuse to go to the doctor as you sat dying in bed. I thought I had food poisoning. And my brother, your son, how do you how do you mistake food poisoning for like heart stoppage? I didn't passing out. She passed. You know. Out. Yeah, Dad, you t you you describe. She passed out. She was puking. She couldn't breathe. Your your dad who ca called you and said he called my brother who was living in Vegas at the time. He said you need to go check on. Well, you know, Mom, my my mother had you passed refused to away. go. You refused to go to the hospital, yes. and even when the paramedics came and they said, yeah. "If you don't go to the hospital, you're going to die," my mom said, "No, it's fine. I'll be better." No, that's better. not what happened. That's what happened. No, yes, it is. They, they I kept on passing out because my heart was stopping when the paramedics were there, and when I came to, the paramedics said I needed to choose which hospital I wanted to go to, and. I didn't really want to go to the hospital. That's what I just said. And, What's so, but, different? Well, he said to me, okay, but you have to sign this waiver. I go, what's the waiver for? He goes, so when you die, yeah, we're not that liable. we're not re we're not responsible. I go, wait, what? <laughs> when I die? He goes, yeah, you're not going to make it if your heart, heart stops. 
um, you'll have brain damage and you'll probably die. And then I thought, well, maybe I should I wonder go. if that's a nice trick they use <laughs> just to get people to go to the hospital. They're like, oh, you don't want to go to the hospital? They're like, okay, well, when you die, which you're going to die, go ahead and just sign this. Yeah. But like, what's, but I'm saying like, I don't know, some people like my mom, you've always been this way, are adverse to seeing a doctor or getting help. And so that's the moral of the story. Because if your ass would have gone to the hospital before, who knows what could have been avoided. Well, you know, in the past, I have had episodes where I was sick. The same thing happened and I would pass out. And I just thought that was a part of not feeling good. Dad, do you have a comment on this? The other lesson I think is uh, don't need critical medical care in Las Vegas. Oh, don't live in Las Vegas? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you need, you know, there's well, I'm people love it there, some people, not well, us, but I'm oh, you're si the medical there is not that good, I don't think. I, we saw ample evidence of that. Well, unfortunately, people that live in Las Vegas probably don't have the option of flying to Los Angeles if they're dying. That's true. So the tip is don't live in Vegas. Well. Unless you like to gamble. You know what, yes. though? My With heart doctor, right. the my cardiologist, after when I had the car, when I had the tempanade, you know, I, w I went to the doctor, a follow-up. They made me promise to go to see the cardiologist after I had gotten out of the hospital. I was out of the hospital for what, one day, two days, babe? Two days. Because I had called, I called the emergency because I wasn't feeling good at all. After you got out. After I got out. And, and uh, they, I, I think it was the next day I went into the the office and the regular doctor that had perform performed the surgery on me mm -hmm. that collapsed my lung mm -hmm. was on vacation. And so um, I was seen by another doctor and they said- um, That's awesome, just punctured your lung. Yeah, on everything was fine. And I said, oh, by the way, I was told when I was in the hospital that I needed to take an X-ray before mm -hmm. I leave. And so, cause I was ready to walk out and then I just remembered, so they said, okay. So I took the x-ray and then the doctor comes in and looks at me, runs out again, looks at the x-ray, comes back in. He says, okay, we got to take you to the hospital now. Oh my God. I went, what? I just got out, remember? So wait, you went back to the hospital for a follow-up x-ray? Or no, I went to the just the the regular cardiologist office just okay, to check for, the for, same for checkup, right? Because I on the pacemaker, right? Because oh my my, God. my pacemaker was on something wasn't right, and then uh, when I reminded them that I was supposed to take an X ray, and I took it, and the 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 doctor that was seeing other patients, you know, they said, "Oh, can you just look at this X ray really quick mm -hmm. for this one patient?" And when he saw it, he freaked out because my heart was collapsing. Oh my, what, what does that mean? I had so much fluid in my pericardium. It's like an inner tube that circles your heart. Right. And it filled up with so much fluid. Around your heart. Around my heart uh, that it was squishing my heart and my heart, the right top side of my heart was actually collapsing. Jesus. And so they said, if you don't get to the hospital now, you will die. <laughs> How many times did you hear that? Oh week? God. Well, the doctor's office is adjacent to the hospital. Yeah, it was okay. right next door. I just door. in a wheelchair, went down a floor, went into the passageway, into the then hospital, Then you had to get another procedure to drain the fluid around your heart. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah, it was. It was really, I, it was I, really you, crazy. You guys could, I mean, the woman that you sits before you guys, I remember when you came to visit us once and uh, you were just, you were so frail and sick and just, you were in such bad shape. And You mean after the like, surgery? The time you remember when Post Malone came over? And yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, yeah. Like, I was yeah. really sick. Yeah. Oh God, I was so sick. Well, when she came home that first week, I mean, I didn't sleep. I stayed up and I listened to make sure she was breathing, mm -hmm. and I nudge her occasionally well, just you, to make sure she was still, you know, conscious, awake, alive. Uh, because yeah, it was it was close. After all of this, like what Dad's describing, my f my lung again filled up with fluid, and I was literally drowning in my lung. Mm. And uh, when they Dad was with me, they for some reason they let you in the room when they they took a needle and they puncture oh, the back thing i heard that's really painful when they saw oh my god that was so painful and they you took out that? 
How many Not leaders? A leader, a leader of I think it was more than a leader. It was almost two liters. It was two big bottles of oh, blue. Like, <laughs> pus and shit? No, it was just like, it looked like beer. You. <laughs> it was just a dark It was fluid. good. It tasted good, too. <laughs> <laughs> so. But after that, I was fine. Wow. I was fine. I'm like a cat. I think I've got a few more lives left. Well. I'm just still amazed that you made a full recovery. So high five to mom surviving. I did. Mom living. Yeah. We love a living grandma. (laughs) Anyway, teddyfresh.com. Yes, (laughs) teddyfresh.com. That was a weird, weird advertisement. Okay. We talked about saving the monarch butterflies. I do need to give a disclaimer here. I, know I was getting say. ready to plant a bunch of milkweeds. Yes. And then we found out that they're freaking poisonous. They're not that poisonous. They're super poisonous to small dogs and and, and <laughs> children. Small animals and kids. <clears throat> That's not true. Yes, it is true. <clears throat> no. Mom, you got to be upfront about the milkweed no, dangers. No. You it's, can't save the monarchs at the, the expense First of all, of you would have to kids. ingest so much of it. Like... Animals that graze, like, mm-hmm. you know, like cows, mm-hmm. instinctively, for some reason, they know not to eat the milkweed. Because it's poisonous? But if they were left with no they'd be di- food they to they eat, it? eat, they would eat it, and it would take so much for them to get sick. It's a cow. A cow weighs like 600 pounds. I'm just Or more. Yeah. I'm just saying that it's dangerous to pets. It's not like oleander. It's just, I mean. It sounds like it is. No, it's not. It's not. It, it, it's dangerous. It's not. I'm just giving you a warning about the milk. If, weeds. you know, I tend to milk weeds every day and I've never gotten sick. You'd have to sit there Give me and a fact take check. it. Get, read me an excerpt on the, on the milkweed. I'm telling you. Because when I was you. looking it up, it sounds like if your animal or child gets into it, it can be really dangerous. You would have to eat so much milkweed. And besides, you can plant it in the back. Maybe. It's not going to go in the back. Oh, yeah, Teddy's not going to go in the backyard. No, not in the backyard. Yeah, Teddy, the nev- back, yeah, the Teddy way, never way, wanders way. around the backyard. No. It's no more poisonous than oleander. No, that's not true. Milkweed contains cardiac uh, glyco- uh, glycosides that are poisonous to humans, but the level of toxi- toximity, tox- toxicity, it depends on the species, first of all, mm-hmm. and how old it is. How toxic is milkweed? All right, let's find out. If you planted milkweed for monarch butterflies, you may be wondering just how toxic they are for people and animals. Milkweed contains, all right, just what I said, poisonous, blah, 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 blah. Depends on the species. According to the Agricultural Research and Development Center of Ohio State University, common milkweed is slightly toxic to humans but only if eaten in large amounts well maybe i'm hung- maybe to- I'm, maybe theodore's out there and he's feeling hungry and he sees the milkweeds and he's going for it he would have to eat <clears throat> milkweed may cause losses at any time but it is most dangerous during active growing seasons several species of milkweeds are poisonous to range animals hmm. to range animals i think you didn't point out the difference between indigenous and foreign milkweed. Like that's true, higher. too. So that's kind of important. In, indigenous also. milkweed. I'm telling you, these monarchs want to die. They just, they want to die. Like they, so here's no, the No, it's not, it's not toxic to them. They, I know, but they want to die. Don't you understand? They have one food source and it's oh. poisonous to everything else on the planet. <laughs> it's not poisonous to everything. Like what is with these monarch butterflies? Couldn't they find a more, a more sustainable thing I, to eat? I found a stowaway, a moth that was living off of the milkweed. And he was like, I had to kick him out because he was eating the plant. Well, it worked for them for probably 10,000 years till humans came and started uh, digging up all of the milkweed. And yeah. they, they were never going to make it. They were never going to make it. This no, world ain't for them. They need to make it. Uh, judging by the comments mom got. Uh, yeah, everybody's on everyone, the train. No, I, everyone's know, it, doing I just want to say that I I feel morally obligated to say, look into the milkweed situation. All right. Milkweed well, did you, 9-11. All right. And do you want to clarify the indigenous aspect yes. of that? If you go to nurseries. The usually what you can find is the tropical milkweed, and you know it's tropical because the flowers are are yellow and orange. 
Of course. And California's uh, uh, indigenous uh, milkweed is white flowers and pink. But for some reason, fascinating. They don't. They don't sell them at the nursery. You have to get their seeds. I've got seeds growing. Oh, you got seeds? You got I, seeds for days? Well, not for days. I used them. I already planted them. I sent Dan pictures of my of my milkweed. Anyway, I'm, I, I don't think Theodore or, or the dogs are in the habit of just eating random plants. No. But I just have to say, because I don't want anybody being like, I tried to save the monarchs and now my dog is dead. Thank <laughs> no. You. You people, I just got to put it out there. That's all I'm saying. People Watch out have, for the milkweed. People have dogs and they've got it growing in their gardens. Plus, you can put it in pots and, and you know, you don't have to Just put saying. It. Okay. Do Just want to quickly wrap up what's wrong with putting tropical milkweed. Oh, my God, oh, you guys. Okay. Oh, need to finish the Okay, point, go ahead please. with the tropical milkweed. Well, because sure like anything fascinated. else that, that gets into the, the ecosystem, if it's not indigenous, it takes over. But and you don't good. want. We're saving the milk. We're well, saving the monarch. The problem, Let's fucking the take problem over. is, is that the tropical milkweed doesn't die back at the end of the season. So the monarchs stay. They stick around. Oh, it kills the monarchs. And, no, it doesn't kill them. It just it, they just stick around. So, so they don't good. fly off to Mexico where they need to go. So oh. the the regular milkweeds. <laughs> You know, died back, and then they right, go. Okay, so, so I gotta you're, go. You're making this hard now. You got to get the right milkweeds, or the monarchs die. You know what? You can use regular whatever they sell at the at the at the nursery. Just cut them back at the end of the season. Or if you want to keep your monarchs, get the tropical, and they'll just hang around your house. Yeah, this monarch no. saving business is way too. No, I have all my. Know? I have all of my milkweed in pots. Awesome. Because I don't have enough <laughs> dirt in my backyard. All right, you want to do? You guys want to do some slang? Sure. Okay, here's your bonus. Let's introduce you to some some slang first, and then we can decide which one's going to be your hundred dollar bonus today. Okay. Oh, you brought notes. I I always bring notes. Interesting. <laughs> I always bring okay, notes. Interesting. I should get a pen so I can write down. Okay. That. Here, uh, what what is king shit? King shit. Like, let's say... S-H-I-T? Dad, dad washed the dishes. He was on some king shit. Um, <laughs> some kind of high. King shit. A high? It's K-I-N-G. King. King on shit. S-H-I-T. Two words. To king Motivated. Shit. Some kind of, like... Dad brought home the good milkweed. He's on some king shit. <laughs> on the good list. When a man does something good, he's doing king shit. All right, I got most of it there. King shit. Do okay. We, I, we, how would you just? How would you? I I get it, but I'm trying to figure out how I could define it. He's yeah. just doing a good deed. He's, he's doing, doing a great. He's, he's, do, on, he's, he's on some. He's king doing shit. what he should do. He's a king. He's a king. He's on some king shit. Okay. Bestie, Props. you know what bestie is? Yes, best friend. Yeah, thick with two C's. T H I C C thick. Someone who's heavy or well, it's more specific than that, Mom. Muscular, it's not muscular. Muscular. It's f it's fat in all the right places, creating sex. Ooh, fat. okay. Thick. Your royal thickness, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> Big mad. Big mad. Big mad. That's an really mad. I planted. A fan planted milkweed in the backyard and his dog ate it and died. He was big mad at me. Yeah, really mad. Really? Yeah, yeah, big mad. Yeah. Over the big top. mad. Extremely pissed. Okay. That's easy. A vibe? You guys know what vibe is? Yeah. Drip. This is a good one. Drip. Like he's, he's a drip? Drip. Not that he is a drip. What, what does that mean? He's a drip? Yeah, meaning he's not, he's like... Um, is that a, a weirdo, a, a drip, <laughs> someone who's, who's like, no, it, it, it's used as an adjective. So he's got no charm. He's a drip he's dripping, or you could say he's got drip or he's dripping. <clears throat> well, Dad, drip is an old expression too, meaning someone who's not really with it or not. That's what I just said. Style kind of out of it. He's, he's he has no it, charisma. It, it means the exact opposite. If someone's Fingers. got drip, it means they've got a badass outfit. Oh. Or swag. Okay. 
drip. A drip. She's dri- you would say to Ela, like I'm dripping, she's dripping in my jewelry. Yeah. I'm dripping in my. You're jewelry. dripping. You're dripping hard with that. <laughs> you could even say you're flexing on me with this. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So let's do today our 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 bonus king word shit? for the day would be. <laughs> no. I think either king shit or drip. What do you think, Dan? Uh, I think king shit's gonna be easier to find a way to weave in. I don't think we're doing any fashion reviews today. Okay, so, so let's do king shit, okay? Okay. All right. That should be easy <laughs> to remember king shit. Okay, so today I have a special assignment for you. Actually, we're doing Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Oh, God. We're doing advice, and we're also going on Omegle oh, to God. make a friend for you. Because I figure you got into a tiff. With your friends from after the last episode, you guys kind of had a fight about the straws well, and about yeah. vaccines, and you there was some drama. A little. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. All on my side. Yeah, exactly. But regardless, I feel like, you know, maybe it's a good opportunity for you to look for some new friends. And so I okay. was going. So I there's like this my web- old friends. No, but I know, okay. but you can never always, have too many you can, friends. You can, you can never, never have, have too, too many, many friends. friends. That's true. <clears throat> and so there's this website, Omegle. Omega. Where you connect to it and you match with random people. And so I'm thinking, let's set you Wait, up. These are just for friends, right? This isn't like. No, it's a, not for sex. It's what not a dating site or anything. It can be whatever you want. Don't look at me. I have no idea what it is. Okay. What's it called? Driggle? Driggle? Uh-huh. Look at the driggle from Omega. Omega. And so we're going to connect to Omega and your assignment today. Yeah. is to make a genuine connection with somebody. I oh, want wow. you to exchange emails or phone numbers and then actually make a genuine connection with somebody where you can follow up with them and be friends with them after the show. Okay. All that right. sounds very dangerous. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be. That's part oh, of the excitement. Oh, great. Well, just give well, them Ethan's address. Well, maybe they're not going to be honest. Let's, be, let's vet them. You just say for yourself if this is someone you want to be friends with or not. I mean, because they can tell you anything that you want to hear. Yes, they could. I'm being difficult. Just give them an email. You don't have to get. You don't have to give them the phone number. Okay. So, so try to exchange emails. That's safe. We come. Yes, that's safer. With, with emails. That's is safer. there anyone over eighteen? Of course, on Omega? Is, Of course, Dad. How okay. dare you? Like I said, I don't even know what it is. Before we get to that, my dad did bring in a mystery link for me. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna open it. So, Uh I don't know. My dad has got some kind of mystery beef or something. So, here it is. Okay. I think that says it all right there. This is uh, kind of in response to some of the back and forths and some of your grievances, many of which are justified about my lack of being father of the year a few times and... (laughs) Issues that we've had back and forth, um, you know, which I've taken some grief for online. (laughs) I was out surfing the web, as many 70-year-olds do, and looking for Ethan's name. And I came across a podcast you had done, uh, Two Bears Uh, in a Cave, with your friend. uh, Tom Segura. Tom Segura, thank you. Uh, And I watched. It was very interesting. Nice Mm -hmm. to get a different perspective. And oh no, I know what this because is. Because Ethan had said, my dad never taught me anything. Ugh. We never did anything fun. All he did was take me to baseball games and stab beach balls with knives. <laughs> never, we never did anything good, never learned anything. So I was watching this podcast, and towards the end, something interesting came up that I thought I'd like to share just to maybe give the fans a different side of Ethan's upbringing. Okay, fair enough. It's only fair. I know exactly what this is, and I knew you were going to love this, so here it is. Shout out to my dad. And and please notice how- You always feel to me- I was just going to say, Ethan struggles to even say this as he's about to say, my dad, so I wanted to point that out. You always feel to me like you have a real, like- clear moral compass Mm -hmm. like i feel like you're a good gauge for like right Mm -hmm. and wrong i've I've even asked like you think this is the right thing to do and like what why do you think that you don't fear what so many people do which is like 
getting on the bad side of somebody with influence. Oh, shit. Autism? I don't know. <laughs> I had this all the way down. Mom ruined oh, your mom and dad. Shit. Yeah, thanks. Tom. Cancel it. Cancel the video. Oh, Did you guys work this out I before we started know, shooting? I all the way down. I actually hit dial on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll go back a little bit, Dad. So you, you get all the you okay. get all the props. I don't know what happened. Why do you, this is going to cause a real fight after the show. Dad's going to be like, "Why didn't you mute your phone?" Tom, continue, please. I think that you don't fear what so many people do, which is like getting on the bad side of somebody with influence. Autism? I don't know. <laughs> High functioning autism. <laughs> I don't know what's the answer. Yeah, to that. yeah, no, that's that's a legit answer. I wish I knew. I mean, if I'm thinking, you know, grow. I, I don't know. I feel growing up, there was like um, my dad was <laughs> a lot of that doing the right thing. Right now. Mm -hmm. That was like a big part of like growing up. Mm -hmm. It's like do the right thing, always do the right thing. Yeah, but you do. I th I I always read that from you. Thank you. Yeah. I try, and so it's like do the so so. There's that part of me. And I think there's another part of me that just doesn't like to take shit from people. There we go. <laughs> so, okay, shout out that. Do the right thing, damn it. Thank you. I, that's kind of important. That's an important lesson, I would say. Do the right thing. Oh, absolutely. So, thank you for that. was uh, one thing you hammered into me. All right. And another one was do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> that I got from my parents. So. <laughs> do the right thing, damn it. Thank you, Dan. That was actually well a really interesting question from Tom because I've never been asked that. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah, people don't really t stir shit like I do. And it doesn't scare. I'm just, I don't know why. I guess maybe I should be more scared of it. I am being sued like, <laughs> I am being sued right now. And they just added a new complaint too, which should be fun. So Really? Yeah, we're going to talk about that this week. Hey. Well, when you do the right thing, you feel good about what you're doing and you believe in yourself. Till someone sues you. Till yeah, someone sues you. Feels good until the consequences come. <laughs> Yeah, he's going, Ryan Kavanaugh aside, we're going to talk about, he's going after Hila and Teddy Fresh. What? I know. It's fucking awesome. What a dick. It's Why? Morbid. Why? They made this really thin, uh, it's not thin, it's non-existent argument about how Teddy Fresh is an alter ego company based on nothing. Alter ego is when somebody sets up basically a fake company to hide their assets and make them, them personally unreliable. Un That's liable. so not true. Exactly. It's based on literally nothing. So it's just like more scare tactics and intimidation and trying to scare us into thinking like that. What a wicked man. Oh, thank you, mom. I agree. I mean, wow. that's one way to put it. Yeah, he's going after Ela Klein. Elas company, Teddy Fresh. That's just wicked. I can't even. It's wicked. It is wicked. Yeah. I, that's a good word for it. What is wrong with him? Ryan Kavanaugh? Well, um, I'm not a psychologist, but like probably, I mean. I'm Mommy not, I, issues. I, I, I couldn't give him a diagnosis, but like, I mean, he does look like Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> we'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, All right. I, that would do it. You could start by diagnosing Harvey Weinstein and then saying, well, he looks like him. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to go to break. When we come back, my mom is going to be finding new friends on a Megal, and I can't wait. This should be interesting. This summer, get the most out of your travels abroad by learning the language of your destination with Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. From ordering in restaurants or asking for directions, gaining a deeper understanding of the culture, Babbel makes the whole process of learning a new language addictively fun and easy. With bite-sized lessons you can actually use in the real world, Babbel is a can't-miss travel essential. Mom... Mom, when, when you were in Mexico, you used it uh, to learn Spanish. I did. Before we, we left for Mexico, I, I was uh, studying with Babbel, and it really helped me get on the road to start learning. Really? Yeah. You were saying how like they keep using the same words over they do. And you, the lessons? Right. And so you keep on, it, you get words reinforced because mm. you continue using words that you've already learned. Smart. 
yeah, genius great. even. It's really Babbel's great. Babbel's 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. And unlike the infamous language classes you took in high school, Babbel has designed their courses with practical, real world conversations in mind. Things you'll get used to in everyday life. Other language learning apps use AI for their lessons, but Babbel lessons are created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching methods have been scientifically proven to be effective. And with Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accents. Yeah. And there are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Let's go. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. Nice. nice. <laughs> That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code FAMILIES. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Code FAMILIES for three extra months for free. Babbel. Hello Fresh. What is Hello Fresh? you may ask, even though you know what it is because we've cooked oh. it and it's delicious. Yes, it is. And that looks really good. Yeah. Ian, Ian made that one. Look at that. That is like unbelievable. That looks so good. I'm actually getting hungry. And Ian was raving. I'm not even kidding. Ian was raving about how good this was. It's great. So it's great. I'm a little bit bitter that I didn't get that one. <laughs> um, what is HelloFresh? It you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. You skip the grocery store, you get the perfect amount, so you don't have to buy like a huge bushel of like cilantro for like two pinches, you know what I mean? And it makes cooking at home easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh cuts out the stressful meal planning and grocery store trips with less prep, less effort, and minimal cleanup so you can enjoy the experience of cooking and get dinner on the table in just 30 minutes. HelloFresh's calorie smart options also make it easier to enjoy tasty, lower calorie meals this summer, if that's what you're into, without scouring the grocery store for ingredients and the web for easy recipes. Come on, they get it all cooked up from you. You can choose from 50 menus. Wow. 50? Wow. Yeah, choose from 50 menu and market items Wowie. each week. From vegetarian meals to craft burgers and extra special gourmet options, they're all available. There's something for everyone to enjoy and with all the recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. You know, I, I've always loved HelloFresh. It's super fun. And it's like they said, you get to enjoy the experience of cooking. There's a lot of stress surrounded with cooking of like, well, going to the grocery store, right. up recipes, and they, they cut out a lot of the stressful things and they just pa make it fun. Makes it easy, easy when you're working. And you too. know you're getting good ingredients. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, cooking is it's a, it's a big commitment of time. So here's what we love, okay? Uh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Families14. Put another one for this time. And use code Families14. Why are we using 14? I'll tell you. You get 14 free meals. Wow. Plus free deal. shipping. What? Let me repeat that for you because I didn't <clears> stutter. <throat> Go to HelloFresh.com slash Families14 and use Families14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. So uh, HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit for a reason. Honey, 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 honey. Why are we chanting honey from the top of our lungs? It's because honey is a miracle on the browsing internet today. <laughs> All of the internet has culminated into this moment where you can click in two easy steps, add the honey extension to your browser, and then you're always saving money no matter what you buy on the internet. It's magic, it's simplicity, it's the beauty of honey. We all shop online, and those promo codes, they taunt us at the checkout, and I'm not having that shit. With honey, I don't have to worry about getting taunted, because what honey does is it manually searches for coupon, or no, sorry, it automatically scours the internet for coupon codes at checkout. It's free. It takes two clicks to install. They're supported by over 30,000 stores online, ranging from tech, gaming products, popular fashion brands, and even food delivery. It's everywhere, guys. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite stores. You go to the checkout, Honey drops down with that beautiful little drop down and it says, apply coupons. You wait just a few seconds, Honey searches all the internet for a coupon, and Bob is your fucking uncle if you don't know that you just <laughs> saved a bunch of money 
for literally doing nothing. This happens. I can't emphasize how often this happens when me and Ela are shopping. Clothes, shoes, whatever it is. It's usually clothing when because when, Ela buys a lot of clothing, yeah. to be honest. Um, and it's like you're just you're shopping. You're getting ready to pay full price. And then all of a sudden, honey comes down with like a 25 percent. That's that money Good adds deal. up. It's crazy. You know, I'll tell you how much it adds up. They've found it's 17 million members over two billion dollars in savings. It's a lot. Uh, hit the Jeff Bezos laughing uh, sound <laughs> bite. Thank you, Dan. So if you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you're going to be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. So we love that. Great. I wouldn't recommend something I don't use. And trust me, I use honey all the time. So get honey for free at joanhoney.com slash families <laughs> it does that's the that is it right then yep it says the wrong thing here so uh get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash families that's joinhoney.com slash families okay we're back and we're about to go on omegle so my mom doesn't know anything about omegle so the first thing you should learn is that even we are on um the monitored side of this right um there is a chance, a good chance, that you're going to see a man's penis today. What? <laughs> if Dan's re recommended, and I'll try my best to avoid that happening. Oh, I don't think I like this segment. <laughs> no, it's going to be great. I I'm going to do my. I'm going to work overtime to make sure you don't see any junk. Oh lord! But like Dan said, if you see someone covering the camera with their hand, there's a good chance the junk is coming. Oh my god! Okay. Why do they even have this website? This is this sounds it's very for people odd. to connect with men's penises. Oh God! All right, let's see though. This this is good. This is this is good, right, Dan? Good to start. Yeah. yeah uh, when, All right, here we go. Ready. I acknowledge. Blah blah blah. Nobody oh, cares. Lord. Nobody reads. Confirm. Here we go. All right, mom. Here's your first friend. Oh, that's oh. weird. Wow, that was weird. I'll talk to her. It looked like someone's arm. My dad was interested. <laughs> what the was it? The old maid I outfit. <laughs> what was it? Well, they they moved on already. Okay. I swear, if someone just whips it out, I'm just like. <coughs> hey guys. Oh, 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 oh. What's going on? Oh. Are we on the radio? Are we on the radio? Um, you're not on the radio, no. But we are on a YouTube show featuring oh, my mom. No. Oh, they burned down. Oh. The radio. Well, what if they're radio? stupid enough to think radio has We're pictures. We're supposed to be doing our homework. <laughs> radio? Since when does Mom's radio Mom's going to find out and we're going to be in trouble. Hey, dude. Bro, I know you're wearing that robe. You, you're you singing a couple. Dude, you, don't lie good. to me. You're about to whip your cock out. Oh, God. I don't want to see this. Dude, why are you wearing a robe? You're making me nervous. This is oh, a, no, this is so, so sick. I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, he's British. That robe is is. Dead. That's a sign. Yeah, That's a... <laughs> It looked like a very comfortable he he robe. He so. said he couldn't hear us. Yeah. But yeah. Oh Lord, what it, what is this, Ethan? This is this is. I'm trying to find you a friend. I'm not sure these are the friends I want to hang with. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hey, dude. <laughs> Uh, put down the phone, man. We're trying to make a connection, bro. Sounds like a horse race. It says there's 53,000 plus people yeah, online. Yeah, and I keep getting all the douches. <laughs> Hello? No, that's fake. That's fake. Oh, my God. <laughs> what was that? They said that's fake. I think maybe they recognized you and thought it was a troll. No troll here. My mom is... Hi. Oh, my God. That kid was like two. <laughs> he was so young. Where's Teddy? Oh, <laughs> Jesus Lord. Christ. This is so bizarre. Guys. Oh, oh my God. We're getting absolutely skipped on. Wow. Nobody wants to talk to you. Well, about. yeah. I'm a 65-year-old lady. Who the heck wants to connect? I mean, it's kind of an interesting-looking situation. You'd think people would be curious. Dude, it's what the fuck? It's all spam dicks. <laughs> it's crazy out here. Hey, dude. Hello. I is this a new life? Hi. Yes, we are. I hope you're not going to whip anything out. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm can say that normal person. Oh, thank God. It's incredible to, to meet a normal person on here. How are you? I'm so glad to see some actually people. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How are you? What are you doing? Go what ahead, is, Mom. Uh, I'll let you connect. Wow. Well, we're on a podcast, my son's podcast, and he thought it would be a, a great way for me to meet new friends. And oh, uh, nice you're the you. first normal person that we've uh, come across. <laughs> Thank you. You're a second. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, what, maybe what, com- what, what do you guys have in common, maybe? I don't know. Well, you look a lot younger than I I am. Are you in school? Are you? Do you have a career? You're probably gonna be surprised when I tell you my age. People don't believe me, but I'm 35. He's 35. Okay, that's the same age as your son. That's a great. That's very interesting. <laughs> okay, almost. I'm 36. Okay. Are, uh, uh, what's your name, may I ask? Oh, okay. Uh, do you know the female name Valerie? Yes. So in my country, we have a uh, male version there. So I'm Valerie, but male version. But it's easy to call me Val. Val. Like Val Kilmer. Uh, yeah, sort of. A. And and Val, do you like butterflies? Uh, <laughs> I never asked myself about that. But I never like asked yourself any. that. Well, my mom <laughs> loves butterflies. Do you have any questions? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I think we have probably have separate interests, but... Mm. Um, well, I'm a very peaceful person. Yeah. Uh, well, All right, Val, let's cut to the chase. Let's people. cut to the chase, Val. Let's see your cock. Oh, please. Oh, God. <laughs> He's kidding. That's a joke. It's a joke. Have you it's been to the it's United States, Val? Have you been well, to the U.S.? I, I can't I can make so, something uh, on, my, on my paper. No, but, um, just... It's kind of fake. How, how fake many news. times have you been to the U.S.? Have you been here? Never. All right, so Never. we're at the point. I, I Do you want forgot. his email address, Actually, Mom? I, My mom doesn't want your email address, Val. Take you're care. You're a nice guy. Yeah, you're a very nice guy. There wasn't a, you know, uh, uh, you know, we, I we wish you well. I was looking for a girlfriend. That's, that's amazing that someone with his intellect would be spending his time yeah, on something like this. It is this. amazing. Mr. Master of Accents, thank you. Pegged Eastern Europe. Yep. Well, you know who else well, is good with that? Well, he said Russia. He said yes. To well, that's Eastern, Eastern Europe. Europe. Russia, it's more like Russia's Asia. A big country. Wow. Well. Russia is a gigantic country. Russia is literally Asia. It's like an eighty percent of Asia by landmass. We're all Eastern European. My grandparents came from Lithuania, which would be Russia right now. No, it wouldn't. Lithuania is its own country right now. <laughs> all right. Well, that was good. We made decided. some progress. Yeah, we're looking for a girl. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. We're not going to find a friend for you? No, I don't know. Dude, you're fucked in the head, bro. Dude, you're really sick. You're a sick fuck, bro. Shame on you. Oh, my God. (laughs) And to show his face, too, like, damn. Oh, my God. Hey, man, how are you? Oh, nope. I haven't seen one. I think you're the only... Woman, Val. On. except oh, for yeah. those two little yeah. girls, yeah, mom. You me. sick fuck! I just want to shame all these guys and make them rethink, <laughs> rethink your life, dude. <laughs> rethink everything you're doing right now. Why are they doing? You're this? you're you're disgusting. What you're doing is not okay. You should feel ashamed and you need help. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Maybe it's a good. He's thing. looking at the roof because he's got his cock in his hand. Fuck you. You fuck off. You're you are a disgusting human being. There's kids on this app and you're willing to show them your dick. I you need that. serious help. You need to talk to a professional. You need to reevaluate everything you're doing. You should feel deeply ashamed of yourself. What do we have to do to get demonetized? I don't know. I think we've done it. What is that? <laughs> what am I looking at? Oh. Dude, all these people are all freaks. And this is the moderated side, too. There's a moderated. Uh, well, let's go to the I, other one. Oh, uh, children. Okay. Oh, Lord. Uh, what are children well, doing on this? She well, knows you. On. you. You can make friends with, with a young girl looking for a role Wait, model. Yeah, but go? I feel fearful for her with what we I agree. Well, ask her what she's doing here. I know. What, how come you're on here? <laughs> what did she say? Hello. <laughs> May I ask you guys a question, please? We can't see you. They're high. Your camera's too high. This is a very... Mom, would you like to say anything to the I young think, women? I young think girls? you girls should not be on the, that. They, they hung they up. They didn't have it up. Uh, there's you, somebody yeah. showing me something. I don't want to see Oh, here it. you go, Mom. Hey. 
Oh my God, another a normal person. Yeah, I hope. this is a normal young lady. How are you? Oh, uh, what a burn. <laughs> oh, no. The Dude, what the fuck was that? Great bestiality. Bass Pro Shop? It's all I need to see, dude. I know you're a douche. I saw the Bass Pro Shop hat, bro. You can't hide it. Oh, my God. I saw the hat, bro. Don't try to act like you didn't show it. It's a pretty small hat if you're covering up your junk with that. Dude, you're... No, dude. No, no, no. <sighs> this is... Gee, let's go to the unmoderated site. I didn't want to know. Bro, I know exactly. Oh, my God. This is the moderated so, side. You know, hey. who are these parents that are letting their children Well, they be don't on know. This? They don't know. Nobody's letting anybody on here. Isn't there some way hey. you can block hey. it? That's crazy. Um, Are we sure we're on the moderated side? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I think so. What's up, you fucking sick creep? I know exactly <laughs> what you're doing, you psycho. What is that? He's covering the camera with a blanket, cuz guess what? He's got his dick. Uh, his hey, dude, get a life. Wow. Get a life. <laughs> hey, freak, I know exactly what you're doing. This is kind of fun, just shaming all these people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, dude. Hi. Wow, it's a normal oh, person. So my nice to see you. Lord. How many penises have you seen before you got to us? How are you? So far, so good. Very good. Where are you from? You know what, dude? Peace and love, but I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. So see what happens hey, when you freak, assume. I know you're jerking it. I love shaming these lunatics, at least. <clears throat> okay. That's wow. That looks real. Yeah, and that's on the moderated site. That yeah, commercial. I know. I, I can't imagine what the. Then why are we doing this? This, this is, is fun. Whole, oh, oh my, my god. god. Okay, sorry. How are they allowing? Hey, dude. I didn't expect it to be such a shit show. To be oh honest. my lord! But now I'm too committed to the segment. We have oh, to get a more. Oh god, I'm not committed to this segment at all. Well, uh, hold on. Maybe. Hey, dude. Uh oh. No, oh, he's man. like, oh. Dude, you're oh, such a fucking creep, Lord. bro. <laughs> I just like sh Hi. That says Los Angeles. Uh, so, Los Angeles. It does say Los Angeles. That was Let's fake. That. that was a fake stream. Hey, you sick fuck. I'd just like to say that I think someone watching porn hey, is much psycho. safer to society and to themselves in general uh, than yeah, doing this. this is yeah, these totally. guys are just... Shout out for porn compared to... Oh, oh yeah. Oh, please. Yeah, oh, totally. All day. This Especially like Team hey, Skeet. Dude, can I ask you a serious question? What is wrong with you, man? You seriously are disturbed. If you're on here, can I see her bobs? He wants to see her boobs, Mom. Her bobs. <laughs> can I see her bobs? <laughs> Dude, you got to get a life, bro. I mean, really get your shit together. <laughs> Hey, dude, you're sick fuck. Oh my God. You got to get your shit together right Why? now. Why? Why? Right now. Get your shit together. Oh, you don't have your dick out? I he don't looks know. unconscious. He, he He's hiding in a closet. You don't have your dick out right now? I don't believe that. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. What's going on, man? Good for you. No. Why are you browsing in the dark? It seems kind of odd. He looks like he's in his pajamas. <laughs> I like the peeling, the peeling paint in the background in that in that place. Oh my god! Well, that's someone that wasn't naked, probably. It's a kid. They're children. Oh my right, god! Maybe I should try to add, add a tag back. This is terrible that there's children I, I was, on this website. I was hey, sick fuck. Strongly <laughs> advised to uh, to use the tags. Okay, it let's try to do the tags a little bit. Significantly reduces the amount of uh, penises you will see. Yeah, let's wow. Oh, it worked that. immediately. Hey, guys. No. They We're know fine. you. We Look are live. Look who it is. We're real. We're real. Peace You're and love. You're joking. Stop. Can I take a picture? Can I please take a picture? They know you. No photos. You have to email me money. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can take a photo. I'm just kidding. Of course oh, you can. can. Okay, I yeah. really thought. I'm sorry. I. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm cool. filming you guys. You know that, right? Who is that? Yeah. I don't. Some Wait, fans. Yeah. I think there's some fans of Ethan. Yes. Mom, do you want to? Do you want to talk to them? Well, you know, 
Who are you guys? Uh, yeah, well, how come you guys are on this site? My mom's worried about you guys. I am. I'm really worried. We were watching. <laughs> you know what? Yes. We're just trying we're to find bored. some chill, yeah. cool people. Just some cool people to hang out Oh, well, then you're not going to like us. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. That was harsh. That was really harsh. Well, that- he said he's looking for chill, cool people. And I thought, mm, not us. Hey, dude. Donna. What? He, King. Yes, I know, but it oh hasn't my God, been appropriate. My dad. <laughs> dad is getting on Come my on. mom's case for more King I shit. I know what to say. Don't worry hey, dude. about it. It's an interview. Mm-hmm. This is an interview. You're being interviewed right now. What are we looking at? Is it the floor uh, or the ceiling? Whatever it is. I'm not into it. There we go. Hi. Hello. My mom's trying to make a friend. <laughs> oh, my God. Brutal. Wow. Hello. Nobody wants to make a friend with someone's mom. They're doing the TikTok tag. You think they want to be on a show. That's the whole point. I got to skip people. Shit. Hi, guys. Hi. This is my mom. She wants to be friends with you. Who is that? I don't know, but they're excited no. to be. Mom, talk to them. Why are you so excited? Why are you girls so excited? There's no way. He's from, I know him. He's from Frenemies. No, 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 we're from families. I'm the frenemies guy. Wrong show. Families. You families. guys want to get to know my mom at all? This is families. Yeah. Mom, yeah. ask them a question. I, I, how old are you guys? No, not that. We don't want to oh, know we that. Don't wanna, no. We don't want to know we that. We don't want to know that. We don't Another question. Know that. What are you girls? All right. Oh, okay. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> hey, hi. My mom wants to be friends with you. How do you know that? Somebody looks like they're tired. Are you sleepy? It's 12.14 a.m. It's 12.14 a.m. So 12, this is my, this is wow. my mom. She's looking to make a friend on Omega. So here you go. Hit wait, it off. Wait. Guys. So, okay. Oh, hey, dude. Not our type. <laughs> oh, that's too mean. Oh, Ethan, this is a terrible segment. This is awful. We're getting closer, though. No, We're getting closer. let's do something else. Wait, the, this isn't. The fans will be the judge of that. Oh, Lord. Hold on, let's find one more. Good I'd one. rather be talking to, to little puppy dogs or something. I oh, I didn't realize that was on the table. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. You fucking monster. Oh, God. <laughs> that was so gross. Hi. Hi. You're Trouble. So gross. Trouble. Hey. Did you call me gross? We were watching no, something called, from a previous. I called uh, your woman gross. Oh, you called my mom? That's my mom, actually. Hey, fuck you. Oh, then I am very sorry because, uh, you know. Mom, you are beautiful. <laughs> oh, Wait, okay. I quit, thought I was change right. Change redemption. Because I was about to go uh, off on you, buddy. If you you don't want none of that heat. Hey, Someone before you was showing mom, their private beautiful. parts. Mom, can I have your Snapchat? <laughs> well, that's why we're here, actually. Why do you have a Brillo <laughs> pad on your head? Give the Snapchat to me. <laughs> that's not nice, Gary. He wants your oh, Snapchat. Oh, he asked for it. No. No, no. sorry. That's mom, a no from my mom. You're not her time. How much? How old are you? How old are you? I'm 65. No, would have oh, been I'm better 66. if he guessed. Oh, Maybe really? You look pretty nine, good. You know? <laughs> he wants yeah. to do a 69 with you, apparently. Oh, You wow. know what, dude? You're fucking, Ooh. you're a pig, bro. You're disgusting. Okay. How dare you speak to my mother that way? <laughs> hey, dude. Oh, this looks promising. No, yeah, Lord. Oh, uh, you sick, uh, man. No, no. You are sick. Don't want to see. Hey, dude. No. No. What are you on the floor? What He's is this backdrop? On the floor. That's designed really solarium. on the floor. He's nice like, sheet vinyl you got there. Yeah. <laughs> Dan thinks it's funny. It's got. It is funny. It's good. <laughs> I want to just find one genuine connection on all I'm, of Omega. I'm over it. We have to find one genuine connection. Ethan, for you. this is not good king shit. <laughs> give me kiss. Give me kiss. And Somebody. No. No. Fuck what? you. No, he wants a kiss. He says, give me a kiss, give me a kiss, suck my dick. I was like, okay. I'm watching Spongebob. Okay, cool, enjoy oh, that. Not my business. Spongebob. <laughs> my generation. Oh, God. Did you see the uh, H3 Teddy Fresh collab with Spongebob? Maybe we could have sold some... Uh, you want me to sling some merch? Yeah, sl- oh. sell some merch. Hey. No. Uh, no, I, no, 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 no. I. How close are we to seeing your dick right oh, now on a scale what? of one to ten? Yeah. yeah, 10. <laughs> 10. Dude, stop. Ten. Uh, hey, dude. You're tr- this is torture. Hey, man. 
He okay. knows you. My mom's trying to make a friend. You want to say hi to my mom? Uh, hi. <laughs> Hi. You know what? It looks like one of those beanies on your head that's spinning with the fan oh, right. on the ceiling. It's right above him, doesn't it? It's like yes. the Inspector Gadget kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a be one of those. You know. <laughs> Who is it? I think I might know you. You might. I think I. You think get you one do. guess. You get one guess. Are you H H two H two? H two H two. You're one off. Oh, H three. One number. H three. But very good. Oh, all right, we'll skip on him. Wow. He got it wrong. He'd live it. Hi, my mom's trying to make a friend. Hi. Hi, Hi girls. How are you? I'm I'm good. You girls are I don't know where you are. Are you having a sleepover? What is it seems pretty dark behind you. It, it's my bir- it's my birthday today. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Congratulations. What a nice, uh, what a nice day for you, Mom. Would you like to? Uh, I don't even know what. To, what did you get for your birthday? There you go. Um, I got a picture of me and my dad. You got so a- recently, uh, my dad had passed away with cancer. Oh, oh I'm so wow. sorry and to hear that. I got a picture of me and him. Oh my goodness! Oh that my! Is just... Where are you? What part are you in the states? Do you, yeah, you you speak English well. Are you are you an American? Yes. Okay, so I how just... when, how recently did your dad pass away? Sounds like pretty recent. Um, November. Wow! Oh I'm my. so sorry to hear that. My goodness. Well, it happens. It happens. <laughs> Wow, what do you say to something like that? I don't know. Well, I, I you know, I, I hope that that you take this experience and it it keeps you close to your mom, and that you, you know, you uh, you take his memory and keep it with you forever, and and excel in everything that you do, and have nothing but good fortune. Thank you. She sounds like a mother, doesn't she? Yeah, well, you know. So what do you guys do anything else fun for your birthday? Um, we're going out to eat at this place by my house. We did this really fun painting painting thing. Oh yeah, we did like a fun painting thing. So we had these like canvases, my sister set it up and stuff, and like we start painting on a canvas and then we rotate and add to somebody else's canvas. Oh, that's fun. That sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. Can I do something? I don't know if you know me. I'm I'm on YouTube, kind of a famous guy, kind of a big deal. If you Google Ethan Klein or H3H3, you'll find me. I want to buy you a birthday present. Oh, that's so sweet of you, oh, Ethan. you don't have to. No, I want to buy you something special. Oh, no. Google you me. Really you can see you can your see that I'm a real person. Your, that's your sister next to you can there? Can you say your name again? Ethan Klein, H3H3 Productions. K-L-E-I-N. Yes, and Just so you, you guys don't think I'm a creep or something, but you know what? It sounds like it's such a special birthday for you, and I just feel like I really want to do something special for you. Did you find them? Did you find us? Look under the podcast, H3 Podcast yeah. Families. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> think, what do you want for what did you, What's something you, you want for your birthday? Like, uh, like if you could have anything you wanted for your birthday, like a gift, like a physical gift, what, what would you like? I don't really know. <laughs> okay. Um, well, what's your favorite store to shop at? American Eagle Air Postal. Okay, I'm gonna get you a. I'm gonna get you like. Well, you know, I bet you some of the Teddy Fresh, like these shirts, would she would like. Oh yeah, Teddy Fresh. Well, I'm not trying to sling my merch. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just, just trying saying. To up. <laughs> you know what? Um, I'm gonna. You email me. I'm gonna get buy you a thousand dollar gift card to American Eagle. Oh wow! Wow! No I, I want you to have a good Wait. birthday. I really do want you to have a good birthday. That he will do that. that. Is so sweet. I want to do that for you. We'll follow up and yeah. and, Here, and write it. Get, write down write, my email. It's write work. it down. Get a pencil yeah. and paper right now. Wow! Happy wow. birthday! And I want you happy to, birthday! And I, and I want you to go and have a really great time shopping and buying whatever you want. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so send that email. Okay, don't Happy forget. Happy birthday! No, Sweet. Sweet. Send that to me. Okay. 
Happy birthday, birthday, guys. Happy birthday. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. Bye, Bye you girls. Are. You're probably the nicest person we met on here. <laughs> well, <laughs> the competition is, yeah, the yeah, competition you, you know is, what? You shouldn't be on Thank here. You. There's a lot of weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> that was so nice of you. That was very king. You were on your king ship. Oh! oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wow, I'm just giving out money everywhere. Ooh, oh. You actually nailed that. That was a perfect execution. They? Perfect execution. Good team, job. Yeah. Well, well, that's, that's about as good of an exchange yeah. as we could have hoped to get out of Omegle. Yeah. So, all right, enough Omegle. <laughs> I've given out enough advice on Omegle to all the guys out there. <laughs> good but let's advice. give out. Let's give out advice that people are actually asking for. Okay, I'm ready. And everybody's favorite, ask mom. Dear mom, <laughs> you really want to be our dear, dear Abby. Well, I but do you my, like Dear Abby? Was that something you were into as a kid? Because you bring that up a lot. I do. Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. Um, no, not really. Okay. I mean, I you know, I I don't I don't think I read her column. Dear mommy, like Dear Abby. Yeah, I'm a little mean, weird with the know. mom, with the mommy. Okay. Yeah, let's just move forward. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. How to be okay with my boyfriend never wanting to get married? This is an interesting question. Hi, Donna and Ethan. Both of you are married, so maybe you can help. Okay. My boyfriend and I are in a stable, committed relationship. We love each other and work well. However, he says marriage is never going to be on the table. He had divorced parents and his first marriage failed. He wants us to be completely separate. I, sug um, I suggested just a name change and no legal wedding, and that too was crossing a boundary. He said he will never buy me jewelry because he sees it as proof to other people of his love. He says we are already a family and nothing else matters. Am I just being silly about how upset I am? You want to crack at that? Well, um, first she has to ask herself a question, which uh -oh. is... People are joking, by the way, that your advice is always dump him. No, no, which no. Is funny. Well, which is funny. Well, you know, she has to ask <laughs> herself... Smoke the joint once. Dump, dump him. him. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, she has to ask herself, does she want children? How does he feel about that? Okay, because that's that's an important issue. You know, there are some famous people like Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell mm. that never got married, but they are both financially wealthy. So they don't care, you know? It's not like your average Joe where you are invested in your financial stability and 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 lean on each other uh, for security. There's also Gene Simmons... And what was her name? Why does it matter if married, if, 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 married, uh, if uh, famous people are married? Or well, because or they're they're so wealthy that to them they don't care. Like I'm you want to marry not, me? I'm, I'm Fine. A, if not, yeah. who cares? Yeah. But they did. Both of them had children, mm -hmm. and you know they have normal from what we can. So what do we from what we know? Um, I, is she is she being silly about how upset she is? No, I don't think I could handle being with a man who said that to me. I mean, not even buying her jewelry. That's That's ridiculous. the part that was a red flag for me. It's like, I understand that he has trauma and uh, um, uh, commitment issues, right? He has His definite parents, he issues. got a divorce once. It sounds like it must have been really traumatic for him. Yeah. His parents were divorced, I'm assuming, at an early age. That can be really traumatic. And so, uh, to a certain extent... I can un I can empathize with somebody saying, you know what, I'm happy to commit to you, right. but I don't want to get married. Okay, so I get that. But the part where he loses me a little bit is when he says he's not even going to buy you jewelry. See that that to me is like makes me think like, well, what is that about? Well, plus you know it depends on where you live. I know California um, observes like if you if you're you know, common law marriage from a different state. Mm. I'm not sure if you move in together in California if it's considered common law. But I mean, he wants to keep everything separate. Um, their finances. I mean, it's almost like, you know, friends with benefits. That's all it really is. Well, that's kind of harsh, but maybe. You know, no, seriously. I mean, do Well, you, they're dating. They're dating. A friend with a benefit is someone you just screw. And well, then, didn't they say that they lived together? Didn't they just buy stable, a Stable, committed. 
Did they buy a house together? What did no, they say? No, nothing like that. Oh. Well, I thought. Oh, you have notes. Oh, you're yeah, referencing your notes on this. I, think I you may have confused it. Wait, what? Is, read this. Read this. Read it again. You want me to read the whole thing again? Re- read the whole thing again. She's in a relationship with their boyfriend. Right. They're stable, committed. Okay. However, marriage is not on the table. His parents were divorced. Right. He wants everything separated. I suggested a name change, but no legal wedding. He says no to that. He won't even buy me jewelry because he sees it as proof of other people. So they're not even living together. That's uncertain. I'm assuming they are. Why would you assume that if everything's separate? I think she just means like banking and stuff like that. Here's my advice. I dump him. <laughs> we need a dump him button. <laughs> dump him. <laughs> no, I, you know, it, it's the like. He's got issues. He's got issues. I, I mean, I think that when a man falls in love with a woman, that's the bottom line, and he's not going to say that. It's like, uh, I, do you not want to get married? Do you not want to get married to me? I, I wouldn't go that far. He can be in love with you. He has got a lot of trauma. And so you're going to have to make a decision. You know, these are lines he's cro- he's clearly laid out. And he's told you, he's communicated to you very clearly, these are my boundaries. So in one respect, we have to appreciate that he's communicating his boundaries to you. So now the ball's in your court. Yes. Are these boundaries that you're gonna be able to live with? I don't know how old you are, I don't know how, many more, how much longer you have to find another partner, so like, cause this stuff kind of enters into the equation a little bit. If you're young, you know, and this is something, if you want, if getting married means so much to you, the big question is, do you question his love and loyalty to you? Right. Because if you do, then everything else is performative. Is this someone you trust to be a lifelong partner to you through thick and thin? Then, you know, if if you're questioning that, then then I'm with my mom and we're going to say hand on the button. Dump, dump him. Yeah, that's a toughie, though. Are you is it silly how upset you are? No, of course not. It's you're not. It's not silly. how upset you are at all. You're completely entitled. And the fact that you are upset is shows me that you're concerned in some way about the legitimacy of the relationship. And because he's so clearly laid out his boundaries, I wonder I'm afraid, how old he is. Yeah, I don't know. I'm afraid for the, the long-term stability of your relationship. I agree. Dad's raising his hand. I know this is the mom answers, gives advice, but I, I see stand- the problem as he has no skin in the game. So- at any time, he could just say, okay, we're done, buy out. So there's right. no there's no investment on his part in the relationship, it seems like. Right, right. Well, that's where it comes, like, do you trust this person to be right. a lifelong partner, or is this someone you're afraid is just going to skip out? And so, look, look, being married doesn't mean, it's like, commitment is, is uh, an emotional thing. Being married doesn't force anyone to stay, you know? Right. It makes things complicated if you want to leave, but, like, Ultimately, do you trust this man? It seems like you don't. Yeah, and, and the whole thing with I'm never going to buy you jewelry. That's fucked up. That's, that's so bizarre. Even if you don't want to get married, buy your girl something, just show commitment. I mean, uh, yeah, that, that's I, I, I'm sorry. He he needs to see a psychiatrist. Oh, my mom coming in with- we're, we're <laughs> Well, gonna, he's got you issues. Know what, you, know what, you know what I think? I think we're going to see this guy's dick on Omega <laughs> in a couple years. That sounds dump like him. a dump him. Uh, I don't know. All right, next one. Oh, what is it? Creepy boss. Uh-oh. My boss is a man in his mid-50s. He constantly talks about what a cool guy he was. Sounds like Michael Scott right off the bat. <laughs> Who t- I was such a cool guy. And he tells stories about his youth that are similar to something you'd find in an old 80s movie. If you needed a dictionary definition of incel, he'd be the perfect candidate. He asks if female employees have nudes on their phones and if he can see them. He also asks if we know what OnlyFans is and if we or anyone we know has one. He saves pictures of our female employees on the work laptop without thinking anyone can see. He's a creep that's really bad at hiding it. He defends Bill Cosby and other serial predators by saying he doesn't understand how someone so rich and famous needs to drug girls to get them. I'm already looking for a new job, but I feel so guilty leaving my coworkers with this guy. I want to make a report, but I'm scared he'll know it's me. What should I do? 
tough. Well, you want to you want to take a crack at it first? Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Mom has um, a mom. Well, you know, first of all, love how prepared. There's so many different levels of 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 creepy, and and someone who is harassing you at the workplace. And so, how do you rate this? I mean, well, first of all, he hasn't physically, you know, touched her. Well, clearly, there's no HR. That he must be the the owner of the company. Otherwise, if you have a human resources, well, I mean, he's done so many things that would get well. You don't know that. Fired. It's hard to know. You don't I mean, know yeah. that. You know, he. It's like he walks the line, you know, where he knows he can't physically touch them otherwise he's in trouble although you know he's way over the line he's way over way. the line yeah Mom. you know i was he's to, way this over this morning the line. dad had stephanie miller on the radio and there's uh dr wendy walsh she's got um a podcast on uh i radio and it's called mating matters and she talks about a lot of these different issues she actually was a model when she was young and um, she was molested by by the guy that was the boss of the way of you elite, brought that up. Uh, like, of, 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 it's like a Wendy Williams thing. No, I mean, and she she talks about the different levels of being. Okay, so you know, what's this creep guy's? What's the creep level on this guy on a scale of one to ten? In your opinion? Well, she needs to get out of the environment. It's not a healthy environment. That's that's definitely the for sure. The question is, if that's her boss, what should I do? Can I? Well, if there's someone above him, she can certainly talk to uh, the, his superior. But if he's the boss, if he has something to that that ruins, you know, her uh, her professional. Uh, Um, what am I, what do I want to say? I mean, you know, he could, a lot of people can, can go ahead and put out a word and really, really stifle your, your ability to get another job. Well, she's afraid. That's what she says. She says, I want to make a report, but I'm scared he'll know it's me. <clears throat> Here's what you need to do. This guy's a sick fuck. She needs to leave. There's a lot of red flags in here. Most of all is... Asking females for nudes. Yeah, that's that's even worse. Is saving weird. pictures of female employees on his desktop. That's creepy. Um, this guy is a. This guy is. He's a predator. A, he might be a predator, based on what I'm seeing. Like he hasn't touched them, but right. I don't know if that's something that's on the table. But regardless of if he's touched, I mean, this is not just not a safe and working environment. So. I understand you wanting to leave, and I understand, but here's the thing. This is a t sticky situation, right, where it's not really putting you in a fair position because on one hand, you it sucks that you're going to have to put it stick out your neck and potentially deal with the consequence of this guy either trying to prevent you from getting a job or whatever he's going to do about you that you're afraid of. It's like the, it's like the victim mentality of like, Right. You're if I, I now now I feel like I have to protect the people that are there or I'm going to feel guilty for just moving on and not. So you're in a shitty situation. What is this? What's what? What What do you do? What would you do? Well, unfor I think the right thing to do is to say something. Right. Because uh, ultimately you're kicking the can down the road for someone else to potentially become a victim of his. But, you know, it's fucked up because he's putting you in this position. So, you know, why why do you need to risk your neck for something you didn't even do? So, like, the right thing to do is to say something. The well, safe thing to do is to not say something. So, you know, and, and by the way, it's like, I don't know what this guy's capable of, so it's hard for me to say the cost of doing the right thing in this case or not. But... I'm not going to blame you for just moving on because a lot of people don't want to deal with this shit. And frankly, it's his fucking fault. So those are the two options, the right thing and the safe thing. Well, a lot of times guys will say really stupid things. They're just weirdos and they are creepy. This is beyond that though, right? Yeah, you're giving him a benefit of the doubt he doesn't deserve. He's saving pictures of the employees. Yeah, that's kind of creepy. Laptop. He's asking if they had new photos they can show him. If, if there is a superior... Uh, you know, someone above him, I think she should have a talk with his superior. If he's the boss, 
then she needs to just, you know, without saying anything, just put out her feelers and try to find another job. And as far as her coworkers that are left behind, they're aware of what's going on. If if, if she's had that that experience, so have they. Yeah, we'll talk to the coworkers. You know, I still. mean, because obviously, that's not a good environment. And if he is not. Yeah, that guy needs to go, man. That guy's you know, a da- that guy's a danger too. I don't think if, if if the if if there was someone above him and they knew that he was he was acting like that, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Oh, for sure. Huge you know, they they need to get rid of him. So she needs to be honest if there is someone above him. Well, that's what I'm saying. And talk he has to two them. choices. The right thing to do and the safe thing to do. And ultimately you're gonna have to weigh the pros and cons of what to do. I don't know. I really don't know. Expediency versus principle. The truth is that if you move on and don't say anything, and this guy ends up assaulting someone or doing something like that. You're gonna feel guilty. And my thing in life is to oh, I don't ever want to feel guilty about any decision I ever made. So I, I I like to move forward with a clean conscience. So whatever is gonna make you move forward, thinking like I did the right thing, and I'm not gonna feel guilty about what this guy did to other people. No, it's not your responsibility. But personally, that's my advice: do the right thing. Fuck this guy. You'll find okay. another job. And if you have an HR department, they will keep you anonymous. Right. It's like this guy never heard right. of the Me Too movie. Well, I think right. I don't think she's in that situation. She seems pretty Sounds- certain he'll know it was her. So depends on the size of the company. Obviously. Well, it depends on who's who's. I mean, if if whoever's just- in charge above this guy, if he's a real bozo too. Look, uh, based on what she said, she says he's probably going to know it was me. Okay, so thank you. Hmm. Peace and love. Good luck okay. with that. Fuck that guy. That guy's a creepy fuck, dude. Yeah, you, that's... <sighs> what a douche. Men are gross. Sorry, Dan. Any in? Except for the you men on... You guys are the good ones. Except for the men on Omegle, of course. And the men on Omegle are the only good ones out there. <laughs> oh, God. Men oh. Are freaks. Men are such freaks. Jeez. How do you even date? How do you even <laughs> be with men? What a disaster. There's a, you have to keep propagating <laughs> the species. We got to, you know. You put it, yeah. You kiss a lot of frogs. It's that drive. Women are saints, man. They just, they do it all. They carry they carry the whole of humanity on their back. We do. <laughs> all right, here we go. Real foot fetishizer. Oh, this is, this is interesting. All of my life, I've always had a thing for feet. Lately, the media has been making it out to seem like foot fetishes are bad, and I've become too scared to tell anyone that I have a thing for feet. Should I continue to hide my fetish or just come out of the closet, as they say, or in this his case, the uh, the shoebox? The shoebox. Shoe yeah, That's a good I, one. The shoebox. Well, I think if he's dating a woman, I don't think he should come right out and say, I've got weird food, uh, foot fetishes until he dates her and he realizes that she likes him and they end up going out a couple times and then he needs to come out of the closet and be honest with her. He needs to come out. <laughs> he needs to tell her now. Could you take Before your shoes off, dating? please? I mean, how, 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 when you say foot fetish, yeah, like how, how fetish. Yeah, how much are we talking about? Yeah. You know I mean? Because like if you're being intimate with a woman and you start doing stuff with her feet, I don't think that's a big deal. Like, I feel like that's in the realm of like. I mean, a lot of It's guys, like a little outside normal, but it's enough to, to, to like handle. But are we talking about like, yes, mistress, like you're at a restaurant and you're like, yes, mistress. And you're kissing her feet. <laughs> that's a little weird. Like we have to, you know what I mean? Some guys like to paint their, their partner's toes. I have a feeling that's only the beginning of what this guy You is. know, but I mean, if he wants to do something sexual with her feet, maybe she'd be into it. Exactly. He needs to just be honest but it, with her. My thing is like feet fetishing is something that I think most of all the fetishes to have, I feel like this is one of the easiest to digest for your partner. Like if you want to do weird shit to her feet, it's like, I don't think she's going to object to that if that's what you're into. Well, yeah, and if she does and he's okay, all right, there's limits. I can go so far with you and that's fine. I don't think that I there's... I think you're good. I don't I don't think you need yeah. to work. I don't know... Just go out with her. I mean, do you have like, I don't don't know what we're talking about. You have pictures of feet all over your house? Because that's bad. (laughs) That's hard to explain. Because he makes it sound like it's such a big deal. Are you into feet? Are you like, how into feet are we talking? No, you don't need to be scared. I think, I think, and also foot fetishism is, 
very popular. I mean, in terms of, fit, I know that like there a lot. A of lot are, of guys uh, are just like Wiki Feet. Hello, yeah. I mean, we have a society that has was, Wiki Feet. So yeah. how forbidden can it be? I actually don't think you need to be embarrassed by this. I think if you just yeah. say I'm into feet, you know. I think Take that's off your that's, shoes. That's fine. You know, people, some people like sniffing farts and shit. So, like, that, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're pretty good. Yeah. You're pretty good. I wouldn't worry about it. Well, I, what, what do you mean come out of the closet? Do you need to go around announcing you have a foot fetish? No, I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, you know, keep it to yourself to a degree. Nobody wants to know. You know, I don't go around saying that I like to. Uh, don't say it. <laughs> I mean, if a guy said to me, I, I love your feet, you've got beautiful feet, I think that's a compliment. Yeah. You know, and if he says, then, oh, you know, let me says, paint your toes. Can I smell your feet? Okay, then it starts getting weird. But, but you know, I mean, if he enjoys painting your toes, it might be an exotic experience. I'm pretty sure he but has to get much if it weirder gets, than if that. If it gets really interesting, then that's up to the girl if she's like okay with rough, it or not. You know, just, just, like, just be like, yo. Anyway, you're good, dude. Trust me. Don't worry about it, man. You're fine. You know, are you chopping feet off? Like, why is it so serious? You have feet in your freezer? I'm just saying. <laughs> There's different varying levels of foot. Uh, yeah, fat. yeah. I, just keep your shit together. He just, don't yeah, do he doesn't weird. sound like he's that off the chain. No, it's only three sentences, so who knows? Yeah, yeah. You're good, bro. Just keep, just enjoy yourself. <laughs> Find you a girl with some crazy-ass feet that you can just get weird with. You'll be happy for life. <laughs> Okay, I need advice. Hi, Donna and Ethan. How do I tell my boyfriend that he has approximately zero months left to propose until I'm out of here? We've been together for 4.5 years and living separate the entire time. We recently moved in together and things are doing great. We love our house. We are enjoying cohabit cohabitation. I have a nagging thought in my mind that I've only prolonged the inevitable by moving in without a ring. I'm afraid that I may be giving the wifey special when he's only signed up for the girlfriend experience. I'm tired of waiting. Okay. When Jessica, your, your Ethan's sister, was young, I always used to say to her, you know what? If you want to move in with, a, with your guy, that's fine. But put a ring on it. But she didn't. She moved in with Brian I moved beforehand. in. I moved in with Ela well, well before we were engaged. Right. Things are different. Uh, you know what? If she is in love with him and he is in love with her and she feels like, I want to get married, you know, story, which I think I've told before. So if I'm being redundant, you'll have to indulge me a little bit. Well, tell me. We'll cut because I don't want... We'll okay. We're not here to tell stories <laughs> like that time's da over. Dad, dad and I, when we were, you know, we were dating two and a half, three years. And every night we would say good night to each other. Mm -hmm. And I hated it. I just hated it. And finally, I just said, marry me. So she doesn't have to wait for him. If she feels that strong about it, then ask him to marry her. Yeah. You know, well, and if he says no, she needs to find out. Is he just not ready or he just doesn't? I mean, it's the mere fact that they've moved in together. I mean, something. you're saying communicating. So there's some key facts left out here. You're saying he has zero months left to propose. Have you guys talked to proposal? Have you asked him if you if marriage is on the table? Obviously, communication is the key to everything. What should you do? I mean, talk to him. Tell him you got to get fucking married. You need to know how committed he is. The clock is ticking. It's time to make a family. As a man, I don't get the whole commitment issue. I really don't understand these people. Like, if I was with somebody, and before Ela, all of my girlfriends were somebody that were like, I knew were fine and fun for the time, but I knew I didn't want to marry them. I would never move in with somebody like that. Right. I would never progress the yeah, relationship that's, that's... to the point of moving in together if I knew that there was no long term prospects. In fact, I know I wouldn't even date these people for for more than like six months in a year because it's just pointless, right? You're wasting everyone's time. Until I met Ela, I immediately knew this was someone I wanted to marry, and so everything else fell into place easily. Right. I don't understand guys that you're going to spend four and a half years together, you're going to move in together, and you're not going to want to get married. Like, I mean, what what is wrong? I just don't understand that. Well, that's mentality. why. That's why I don't think that she should come at it with 
like an ultimatum. Like if well, it you, sounds if like you she don't... doesn't want to waste another day. Well, that's why she I... says zero months right. left to propose. She's tired I'm out of, of here. She has no more patience. So that's She's why tired. I would say instead of waiting for him to ask you, ask him. And if he's yeah. if he says yeah. no. You need to find out, do you not want to get married, period? Do you not want to get married to me? Are you waiting to save money for a ring? They just moved into a house. I mean, there could be a number of things. Just say, look, you know, that's not a bad idea. I know it's not romantic. I know it's not what girls dream about. Everyone wants to click these big, beautiful romances. Or probably, look, I, you guys know, I gave the ring to Elon to pack of baby wipes, okay? It doesn't matter. <laughs> the moment doesn't matter. It's the life that happens afterwards. So don't get caught up with all this romantic bullshit and fantasies. Just say, look, motherfucker, are we getting married or not? No, she doesn't have to say it that way. Just be well, sweet and don't say, I love say you, verbatim. marry me. <laughs> don't say that verbatim. But yeah, say, I love you. Let's get married. If he says I no or he's not ready, you know, give him a few days to think about it. And if he's not changing his mind, then it's peace, one love. See your dick on Omega, loser. <laughs> Dump him, right? Dump him. No, button. no. Dump him. I, no, no, I'm no, him. no, 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 no dump, no dump. Dump how, him. How much more time should she yeah. invest in? Well, yeah. What do you, how, what well, are you supposed uh, to wait? Well, she needs to ask him to marry her. I said her. ask. And if he says no, dump him. You got to move on. Well, if if he says he just doesn't want to get married, then yeah. Yeah, then. He's just going to, what if he gives like the, another bullshit noncommittal answer like, well, you know, let's just wait and see, stuff like that. Well, give him a timeline she, and then. If, well, she said that's zero it. months. Zero months. So what do we say to him? Well, if he's Dump not. Dump him. Dump if, him button. If she asks and he, and he declines for, you know, all the wrong reasons, then. What are the right reasons? He's saving for a ring. Mm-hmm. How long is he saving? Four and a half years? How old are they? You know, I mean, dump if it. they're young. Dump, dump, dump. All right, dump, dump them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but <gasps> oh, after everything, advice on where to store sex toys. This is interesting. <laughs> oh, there's no place to hide. <laughs> Dear Ethan and Donna, my wife and I both love your podcast so much. Our question is for your two is where would you suggest we store our sex toys so what happened to Ethan doesn't happen to our own children? That's a great fucking question. Okay. That's actually a really good question. Yeah, well, there, you know, I hid things I thought By pretty way, darn that, good. That massive dildo I found was not hidden well. It was Yes, lit- it was. No, it was it in was. a it was in a sock. It was hidden in my drawer. It was in the top drawer next to your bed. That's like the first place a kid's gonna look for weird shit. <laughs> You know what? The only way you're going to keep your kids out of your shelf. no, 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 they'll still find it. I swear, Jessica. Better than the in, drawer next to your bed. Lock it up. You walls. just have to have a lock it some up. kind you of safe, lock your and you have, to, you have to lock, lock and it key. up. That's Get a it. wall safe installed. That's hilarious. You have to have a lock. It's like a gun. They're going to find it. <laughs> right. Put it in your true. gun. It is true. In your it, gun closet. Yeah, you got to put your dildos in your gun safe. I'm t- <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There's no kids will get into as I have learned. That's funny. You need they a gun get into safe. everything. Yeah, you need a gun. Just, safe. just lock it up. That's actually the, that. That is kind of the only right answer. <laughs> if you are that afraid, as you should be. Yes. Of kids finding your gun, your sex toys, you're Christmas gonna put those toys. Ball, you're gonna yeah. You're gonna have to lock that up with your gold and uh, weapons. They, yep, they find it. Jeez, I just. Unbelievable. That's amazing, though. The thought of having, like, when you're ready to, like, get into it, you have to go to, like, a safe. Well, keep it in the the... (laughs) You're going to need to know this because you've got one on the way and you got Teddy. a $20 dildo. Oh, God. It's not valuables. <laughs> I can only imagine a hundred years from now they're crack. You know how they like find saves in old houses. <laughs> they're like, we're gonna crack open the safe. There's gonna be lots of money or checks or relics, <laughs> and they open it up. It's just a fucking dildo. Oh god! Like what the hell? Yeah, that's the only thing that's gonna be safe that you can be absolutely sure of. You put it in a burn-proof, uh, unbreakable that's safe. Right, fire so safe. Years from now, aliens are. There's gonna be some archaeology done. When humanity is wiped out and the second uh, humanity <laughs> 2.0 evolves, they're going to come to the rub of your house, open this relic. Can you imagine when you die the, and your and kids a huge have to go the into the safe? Silo. Yeah, I now I save it, put it in a safe. Good advice. Thank you. 
Well, guys, that's about it. We had Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, but we'll do that. We'll save that for next week. I'll probably not trivia. Well. <laughs> well, you can have dad blind. Well, dad's things. good at trivia. Yeah, I don't want to go up against dad. He'll he'll destroy me. But you can have the dad lifeline. Okay, that sounds fair. So next week we're going to do Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Okay. And um, next week. So we can I get my report on my butterflies? How many do? How many times? Well, I I wanted to. I wanted to. This is the butterfly show. Dan, can you just show the one pic? I just wanted to show somebody. All right. Okay. Just go to the the, to the chrysalises. (laughs) While we're doing that, I'd like to reach out to the uh, young lady who uh, sent me a message. I think it was on YouTube. Who had worked at a, uh, I think in Chicago somewhere at a ballpark who was booed as were all the other ushers when they tried to take balls away from people. And she her job, Dad. reached out to support me and say, it's thank you for job. doing that. You don't have to k- take the boo. <laughs> well, She's paid to take the boo. I know, but this is. She appreciated his. Seeing a car accident and pulling over to help. It's the not people. at all. It's, it's exactly really like not. that. Exactly. It's, it's, it's like that. quite, it's anyway, quite so literally please not like that. Reach well, out to me again with the information so I can mention you next week if Ethan oh, lets me. Gary. Thank you. With peace and love. <laughs> You're so funny. All right. What well, do I got to open the butterfly shit? Yeah. Oh, God. It butterfly shit? Well, it's like, you know, I mean, God bless them, but... These Come on. I just wanted to inform our viewers of something that they can do. Okay. So let me let me open it. My Discord was closed. All right. We have butterfly updates. Um, the Pet Poison Helpline reports that milkweed is moderate to severe poisoning in dogs and cats, which means get to the vet as soon as you suspect your pet has ingested the plant. I'm telling you, I'm just saying. That was what Ian sent me. Wow. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Yeah, Ian. (laughs) Now everyone's going to go, oh, they're not going to. Okay, so if you look at closely, this chrysalis, this caterpillar had attached himself to a leaf Mm -hmm. on the plant. And what happens is sometimes caterpillars with ferocious appetites eat the leaf and it it could dislodge the leaf and the whole chrysalis could fall. Hmm. The first day a chrysalis is formed, there it's wet and you have to be careful and let it be. But as soon as you can, what I did is I cut the leaf. I don't know if you've got a picture of me holding the leaf, Ethan. This is all I have, I think. Okay. You you know, you hold on to the leaf and you cut it. And I had, you know, a towel and I gently laid the chrysalis down and I used dental floss. And what I did was I tied a loop around the very top, including the the leaf. And once it was it was safe, I tied another knot so it leaves like a loop. You know, and then I took a pin, a stray pin, and I attached it carefully to the top of the cage. And so the uh, chrysalis is safe. It won't get dislodged and fall from the plant, and it'll stay there until it's ready to be born. This is the photo? It's pretty blurry, but let's see. Well, that's me holding after I cut it. And then there's one showing. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty high. You could write a book about this shit, Mom. You're pretty good at it. Well, you know, you lay it down. I even have a picture of me tying the chrysalis. This is pretty cool. You've done. You know, see, you can see that. So it's nice and safe. I mean, you have to be careful. There's, there it is. You make the loop first. Oh, we were, oh, we have instructions. So, yes, yes. So this one right here, which Dan's got to send me it. Okay. I wish I got half as much care and attention as the uh, stinking oh, butterflies get. I rubbed Not your head this all. morning when you woke oh, up. Oh, Don't give me that. Oh, all right. Well, I'm set for the next month. Your father and I chase each other around the bed. We like to cuddle. Oh, you're okay. gross. That, <laughs> so you can see you can see the, the dental floss mm-hmm. around the chrysalis that I'm, I'm about to tie. And well, you can figure it out. Well, it's there for you. You know, I'm, so I really it. want to help, but I got so paranoid about the milkweed. Don't with the dogs. get paranoid. I'm, just, I'm worried. I can't no, have poison no, back there. No, it's not that. Please, 
I mean, the worst that could happen I'd is they would help. get an upset stomach. It literally, I just read, it says, oh, I said it says moderate to severe poisoning okay. in dogs and cats. No, you're going to the vet no, as soon as you suspect your pet. That's from, that's from Healthy Paw Pet Insurance oh, <laughs> Yeah, pet, pet insurance. Here, I want to show you something that I, I sent you. Yeah, from and, Save the Monarchs. That's like these people are corrupted. <laughs> no. And of course, the smaller the dog, the greater. The exactly. Risk. And we have tiny dogs. Oh please! But, but I don't know. The info you got is from SaveTheMonarchs.com or whatever. I mean, this is not. These people are are. Here's see. Here's the different types of milkweeds that you can that you can plant. I'm just saying it's it's there's some risk there. I don't take any risk with those. The worst thing that could be is your dog would throw up. You want to know the truth? I would rather every monarch butterfly die than Shredder get sick. Oh, that's terrible. It's just the truth. Although milk wheat contains toxins, it rarely- If I had to choose between killing every monarch butterfly and Shredder dying, I would kill them all in a heartbeat, and I'd do it every day for the rest of my life. It rarely poses any significant threat. I'm saving my dog. I know. I'm on your side. Fuck the monarch butterflies. It rarely- said that. No, y- y- <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hate for saving my dog. No, it's he's not gonna the get sick. The butterflies want to die. They just they want to go. It rarely extinct. poses any significant threat. That's to from the monarch in. website. These people are are brainwashed. This is not. <laughs> This is not uh, partial information. If you're that concerned, put it in. Website. Put What's it the name in the website. Put it in a pot. And Lies keep about it out monarchs. Of the monarch joint venture. Exactly. Funded by the monarch, uh, save the monarch, yeah, exact, big monarch money. <laughs> Put it in a pot and leave it somewhere high up if you're concerned about your animals or your children, you know. Or in your case, you can put it way in the back where Teddy doesn't go. Teddy goes everywhere. Teddy doesn't climb up way up on top. He goes everywhere. Oh, please. He'll get into everything. You just talked about you have to put a sex toy in a fucking vault. And he's not going to get to the milkweed? How about on the hillside across the street? I would happily put every monarch butterfly in an incinerator <laughs> and cause mass genocide on every monarch. You know what I don't understand? Rip. Oleander. People put that, you know, Oy. right in our driveway, the people next to us, there's a giant oleander. See, bush. that's one thing I think you guys are exaggerating. No, it's gigantic. Oleander. No, I think I don't think oleander is as dangerous it's as super Oh, poisonous. it's way dangerous. No, there's been many cases oh my of people God. going people die and cooking stew Back check that and in. okay, we're going to get an oleander branch. And stir it, and it's that poison. So you just take a branch of oleander, stir a pot with it, and you die. You will die. You You, you will die. Yes. Oleander is very toxic. That's weird because it's like everywhere. Yep. It's like was in our front yard like a huge bush. It's like all over the place. There's a huge bush right outside in our driveway. It's huge. I, I, <laughs> that is that is true. I've always heard that about oleanders. They're very they're very. I feel like it has to be overstated how risky it is because of how prevalent. No, it is. no. Was, Ian, fact check it. When I was a realtor, if I was showing someone a house and they had kids and there was oleander, you had to especially in the backyard. I'd say, if you buy this house, you got to pull this oleander out because it is deadly. Yep. Ian, it's true. Extremely but, toxic. Like, Extremely toxic. Okay, so but what I why hear, are you skeptical about this? Because why, what why are you hear, dying on this because, hill? Because See, so milkweed so is nothing. No, because this is like it sounds like it old folks' right. tales. Where my dad goes, they used it to stir a stew, no, and everybody died. A single leaf can kill an adult human. Boom. Well, why is it everywhere? That Drop just seems so phone. insane. Well, like, I mean, lots of plants are toxic. You just don't eat them. Yeah. Well, in, here in Southern California, they put it on the medians of the freeways. It doesn't yeah. need a lot of water. It grows. It's pretty flowers. It looks good. Kill the yeah. oleander. We don't care if some people Kill die. the milkweed. <laughs> no, the milkweed isn't that Ooh, what big of a deal. The no. I'm anti-milkweed. I'm anti-monarch. Oh, but if you could get monarchs. So you're not going to plant milkweed now? Well, I'm scared for the dogs in Theodore. Ethan. I'm just, I'm scared. Go right up the hill and just plant. California's some... doing like a billion dollar milkweed foundation. 10 million, but what if you could get the monarchs to eat oleander instead of milkweed? Then that'd solve your problem. Then I got to plant oleander in my backyard. <laughs> no. Can't they just eat like fucking uh, ivy? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they figure it out, they idiots. Don't, they don't eat ivy, they eat milkweed. How about eat like a uh, an oak leaf, dumbasses. A daisy. Ivy is mildly poisonous, by the way. 
Oh, get that out of here. See, there's, there's <laughs> always plants something all that's trying to mildly. Kill us. Uh, uh, you know, plants, that's how that's their defense. They have to be somewhat well, toxic. You know there's what? a lot of plants. Milkweed is not, if if Teddy were to put milkweed leaf in his mouth, I nothing would happen. If Shredder ate a gob of milkweed, he probably would end up getting really sick, but he wouldn't die. Okay, doctor. Let's take a chance. Yeah, again, I'm sure you. I'm sure you know exactly what would. And happen. he's not. And, Shred, and as a Shredder, veterinarian, and it, you know what? It it probably would taste awful. He wouldn't want to even eat it. Well, that's, there's only one way to find out. Guys, thank you for watching. Frenemy <laughs> families. Ugh, family. Oh, strike that. Yowza. <laughs> families. Thank you for watching. Families. We'll be back next week, as always, with Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Are you smarter than a fifth grader? God, I hope so. <laughs> I'm saying yes. Going out on a limb. Yeah, I think you do. I think you do. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so, thank you guys. Once again, regular schedule. That means off the rails and after dark coming, as usual. Yay. Teddy Fresh on Instagram, Thursday, 10 a.m. You know what it is. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button. Ciao. Thanks, everyone.